If you want to take your Vita from this to this, or maybe even this, you've come to the right video. In this guide, I'll show you how to play PS Vita games on TV using your PC. It works with all jailbroken PlayStation Vitas, and best of all, it's free. Fire up your Vita and your PC, because we're starting now. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to become part of the conversation. And check the video description for the links featured in the video and the latest show notes and updates. All of this has become so much easier than it was just a year ago when I looked at this on the channel. And it's all thanks to the power of Auto Plugin 2. It's available on the GitHub and I have it linked for you in the description below. Scroll down on the page to the Assets section and then click and download Auto Plugin 2.vpk. You'll also need the latest version of OBS Studio. I have this link for you in the description below and it's a free download. From the OBS Studio main page, click on the download link that matches your operating system, in this case Windows. Click on it, you'll be taken to the download page and your download starts immediately. If you have any concerns about downloading these files or any other online activity, get a VPN. I use NordVPN, they did not sponsor this video, but I use them and trust them. They use encrypted connections to protect your privacy online and they have a no logs policy. You can sign up with Nord with the link in the description below and get a huge discount. Inside the downloads folder on your PC, you'll see the installer for OBS. Go ahead and run the OBS installer and set it up on your computer. And hit the confirmation prompt, click on yes. Installing the software is the usual process of clicking next several times, click on install, and when the process is done, click finish to close out the installation window. Once the installation is complete, you can right click on the installer file and delete it because you don't need it anymore. From your modded Vita, select Vita Shell by tapping on it or selecting it with X. Then tap on Starter selected with X to launch the program. From the Vita Shell main menu, press Start to pull up your connection options. And I just want to point this out in case you're using SD to Vita, you'll need to identify the path where that SD to Vita is located. This usually is set to memory card by default. Make sure if you're using SD to Vita to change this. Otherwise, just leave it to its default. Press the circle button to go back, and then press select to connect your Vita either by USB or FTP. Back on your PC, and with your Vita now connected by USB or FTP, you can copy over the autoplugin2.vpk file over to your storage. Make sure if you're going to drag and drop it like this, don't drag and drop it into one of the folders. You have to make sure to drag outside the folders, and then drop it there. It'll drop it to the root of your storage at that point. Now you can close out any File Explorer windows on your PC because you're done transferring files over. Now you can transition back over to the Vita for the next steps in this guide. On your Vita, press the circle button to disconnect your FTP or USB connection. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the UX0 drive area on your Vita and select it with the X button. That's the storage where you just copied over the autoplugin2.vpk file. To access that file, use the D-pad to scroll all the way to the bottom of the list of folders and files. You'll find the autoplugin2.vpk file down here. Highlight it using the D-pad, then select it with X. At the confirmation, select Yes, and at the permission screen, select X for Yes. Once the installation process is complete, you're done with Vita Shell for now. You can press the PlayStation button on your PS Vita, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold the circle button to go back to the live area. You'll find a new bubble dancing on the live area for Auto Plugin 2. Select it with the D-pad to highlight it and select X or just tap on the bubble, then tap on Start or select it with X to launch the program. Auto Plugin 2 will set itself up at a first time launch, then you'll be presented with its main menu. Select Vita Plugins with the X button. Then inside the Vita Plugins main menu, Select Install Plugins with the X button. You'll be presented with a long list of plugins, but you're only going to need one of them in order for this to work. Use the D-pad on your Vita to scroll down through the list of options. You're going to come across one that says UDCD UVC. Scroll up to that plugin and select it with the X button. Be sure to select the one that has either OLED for Vita 1000 or LCD for Vita 2000 models. In this case, I'm using a Vita 1000 model. Select the one that you want with X, it will install automatically. From here, press the circle button to go back one level in the menu, then press circle again to go back to the main menu for Auto Plugin 2. You'll need to restart your Vita for this change to take effect. Scroll down to Exit and select it with the X button. Then at the confirmation prompt, select OK with the X button to restart your Vita. 
Once your Vita restarts, you'll be back at the live area and you can transition back to your PC for the rest of the guide. From your computer, go ahead and launch OBS Studio for the first time. Once you've launched OBS Studio for the first time, you'll be taken to an initial setup screen. You'll be given several choices to customize your OBS experience. Here I'm going to select Optimize for Recording I Will Not Be Streaming. Once you make your selection, click on Next to continue. You can customize your resolution and frame rate here, but since the Vita is a 720p device, you can just click Next to continue. Once you're done, click on Apply Settings. It might sound a little funky, but OBS actually recognizes the PlayStation Vita as a webcam, and you'll need to have your Vita connected to your computer over USB to continue with this process. To set this up, navigate to the Sources section and right-click on it. Hover over Add, and then in the list of potential choices, scroll down until you see Video Capture Device, and click on it with the left mouse button to continue. The program assigns a default name to this source, but you can also rename it to your liking in order to make future sources and multiple sources easier to sort out inside the software. Then click on OK to continue. You'll be presented with a new pop-up window and you should see your Vita stream already inside this window, but as you notice, it's not configured correctly to take up the entire window. Let me show you how to fix this. First, click the OK button in the bottom right corner to close that window. See the red selector box around your PlayStation Vita's video output? Right click inside that box. Scroll down to Transform, and from the list of choices, scroll down until you see a listing for Fit to Screen, then click on that with the left mouse button. Now you'll see that your Vita's video output matches the preview window inside OBS. To maximize your output as full screen, right click in the middle of the preview window. From the list of menu choices, scroll down to where you see Full Screen Projector, then slide over to the list of choices on the right which will indicate your monitor or your capture device, in this case an Elgato. Left click that device name and you can now output your Vita video full screen either to your PC monitor or to your television through HDMI. And for even more great Vita content, check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. I'll see you there!